Good morning and welcome to Resurrection. We welcome all who participate with us both in person and online. Please silence your cell phones and other electronic devices. Today we celebrate the Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Our celebrant is Bishop Reese. As we begin our celebration, please stand and greet one another with a wave. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered into his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, allowing, following his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in the resurrection and in life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Stay here until I tell you to go, okay? The two of you come back here. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem, and as he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said, Go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered there that no one has yet ever sat on. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You are to answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were <clears throat> untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying this colt? 
And they said, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus and threw their cloaks over the colt and helped him to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the street. And now as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds that they had seen. And they proclaimed, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd saw, said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he said in, the, in reply, I tell you, if they were to keep silent, the stones themselves would cry out. The gospel of the Lord. In faith, let us now proceed with Christ into the city of Jerusalem. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and commit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
bishop has asked that we be seated, please. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you, that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood, but see, the one who portrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out against about them, of which they should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them <coughs> are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is set at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who are, have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink and sit at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to shift all of you like wheat. And I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when, <clears throat> and you, when once you have returned back, strengthen your brothers. He said to them, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied me three times that you not, do not know me. He said to them, <clears throat> When I sent you out w without a bag or sandals, did you lack anything? No, no nothing. They replied, He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he has counted among the, law the lawless, and indeed that is written about me is being fulfilled. Then they said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently 
that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you will betray the Son of Man? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, No more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who came for him, Have you come out with a sword and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and asked, This man too was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted. Assuredly, this man's voice was with him, for he also hears about him. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, a, the cock crowed, the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prophesy, who is this And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before the Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, you, you say that I am. Then they said, Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priest and the crowds. I find this man is not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all Judea. From the Galilee, where he had to be On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. And upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time. 
for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him. And after clothing him with resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formally. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But they all shouted together. Away with this man. Release Barabbas to us. Now Bar Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed over Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women, who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this, then the wood is green. What will they do when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king, Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, I tell you, you will be with me this day in paradise. 
It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he had breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts, but all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they, saw, when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oil. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just a few moments ago, as we had our opening Gospel to begin today's celebration, we were all saying, Hosanna to the son of David. And we just recently, just a few seconds ago, yelled out, crucify him, crucify him. This week, this day and all the days of this most sacred week is like a, a roller coaster of emotion. Today, followers of Jesus praised him and said, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Because he, they saw the good things that he had done. On Holy Thursday, we will celebrate a great gift that Jesus gives us just before he dies. He gives us himself. He gives us himself in the, the, the wine and the bread of the great Paschal meal, the Mass. And he tells us, do this in memory of me. It's like saying to us, I won't be here, but you need me. I give you this so that I can be with you, be present to you, help you, strengthen you, give you courage to face whatever life throws at you. And on Good Friday, his enemies prevail. They take him before Pilate, a pagan, and they say, he must be crucified. Now, Pilate didn't see any law that he had broken, and he refuses at first. But because he too was weak and afraid of the mob, he gives in. 
And because the Jewish people could not carry out a sentence of death, he sends his soldiers to crucify Jesus on the cross. And Jesus gives up his soul for us. Father, into your hands I, I commend my spirit. But even in that tormenting time, Jesus does not forget us. And he looks at his mother Mary, and he tells her, Behold your son. And he looks at St. John the Evangelist, and he says, Behold your mother. Jesus gives us his mother to be our mother. He gives us himself, Lord and God, and he gives us his human mother to be our mother as well. And then Holy Saturday is a very quiet day. It's almost a nothing day until we come to the evening, until we come to the evening. And there, in thousands and thousands of churches throughout the world, a fire will be lit, a candle will be lit, and we will sing, Alleluia! The Lord is risen from that dead. The church calls us to enter into this week with hearts opened, with minds opened, to be able to receive the great blessing and gift that the Father has given us, his Son Jesus, and what Jesus has done for us. Let us pray for one another that we can enter into this week and truly allow the graces of God, our Almighty Father, to fill our hearts and fill our souls so that no matter what has happened in the past, this can be a beginning, a new beginning for each and every one of us. God bless you. We have the prayer, the, the creed. Huh? Yeah. I believe in one God. Let us pray. Go ahead. Renew your church, O Lord, in the coming holy days. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bring peace to the nations and inner peace to each of us. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Bless those preparing for baptism. Give them grace and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Transfigure this parish community by our celebration of your son's passion, death, and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved departed may be brought into the peace of God's presence with all their sins forgiven. We remember Marjorie Potvin and Carlos B. Rivera. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our military, first responders, all the unborn children, the sick, for all the intentions in our prayer book, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, these are our needs and the needs of the people whom we know and love. We give them to you now in faith. Through Jesus, our loving Lord, who lives with you and with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it on our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners. and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was at... In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be made co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. us always faithful to your commandments, and never let us be part from you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
A prayer for spiritual communion for those of our brothers and sisters who could not be with us. <clears throat> At your feet, O gentle Jesus, I present myself humbly before you, contrite and confident of your mercy. I adore you in the sacrament of your love, the most blessed Eucharist. I desire to receive you into my heart. While I wait to receive you sacramentally, I wish to receive you in spirit. Come to me, my Jesus, for on my part I am coming to you. May your love embrace me entirely in this life and in death. I believe in you. I hope in you. I love you. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Nursed with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection may you lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Okay. Amen. Be seated for just a brief moment. We want to thank all of you for your generosity, for the food bank, and for your continued support for the poor and those who need our help. Please see the bulletin for what we need for this week. As well, please see the bulletin for the Mass times for the Triduum. It's a, this is an important time, so you'll see all the times that we have Masses here at Resurrection, but I also believe in the collaborative as well. May God bless you as you continue on during this Holy Week. We stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. Look, we pray, O Lord, on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Announce the gospel of the Lord and glorify the Lord by your life. Amen. Yeah.